don't need it. I 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 need it. What? What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I want to bring you guys a deck profile that I haven't done here on the channel before but I think it's an actually very interesting deck profile and it plays well into today's format which I really really like and the deck that I'm talking about is Marincess. Marincess is a deck that not a lot of people are talking about. I know it got hyped a little while ago but it's kind of fallen off again. I think this deck is still really really powerful so let's get right into the deck profile here. We are starting off of course with three blue tang. This is your best normal summon of the deck. On normal summon this foolish burials any Marincess monster you in your deck and that's insane because it helps you get into a lot of your extenders right so one of your extenders or main ones being uh three spring girl now spring girl has the effect where you can banish a marinsis monster from your graveyard special summon this card and so this kind of sets up spring girl really well and it helps you link climb more a lot so that's why you want to max out on all of these and then another one you want to max out on is three seahorse now the thing with this deck that's really good is that all of these cards like other than the normal summon of the blue tang and even the cards that i'm going to show you that i haven't showed you yet are pretty much all extenders so seahorse has the effect where if you control essentially like so you can special summon it essentially to a uh, zone that you or a thing that your link monster points to that's that's i don't know how I'm, if i'm saying that right but basically this points down you can summon it to here really really powerful in that sense so you want to play three seahorse two of the pasculus i like playing two so this is kind of like a mid game card it's one of those cards where if it's normal or special summon you can special summon a marine Test monster back from your graveyard so it's not the best thing you want to start on i like playing two i don't like playing one i just feel like it being another name is really powerful it's one of those cards that you can also send off of your blue tang just to get a lot of your combo started so i do like playing two just to have the extra name this deck does need even though you have link ones this deck does need two names kind of to start all of its combos and get all of its combos rolling that's why i like playing the extra names even though this one specifically might not be the best one to start with it's an extra name that you can get going with right so that's why the two pasculus and then the same reason for the two mandarin mandarin if you control two or more marinsis monsters especially summon this card right so mandarin is really really powerful as well and that's it for the marinsis monsters but just to end off the marinsis package here because it's actually a very small package we're playing one battle ocean battle ocean is really powerful because this is kind of how you get your towers going it makes it so that your link four that you're probably going to end on a lot of the time becomes unaffected because you're going to be using a crystal heart to make it and then on top of that it helps you boost your monsters attack and equip monsters from your graveyard to the boss monster that essentially you're making and this deck essentially is just making a boss monster and uh you're just passing on that boss monster and hoping your opponent can't beat it it's like a towers deck right we're playing one marinsis dive dive is really good i don't like playing two just because one is searchable with thrust if you guys want to search it and i'm playing thrust in the deck but it's one of those cards that requires setup um, and it's a very powerful card, don't get me wrong, it's an insanely powerful card, but again, because it requires setup, you don't want to start with it, it's a card that you want to search in your combo, because you can search spells or traps with these combos, so for that reason, I just want to play one dive, and then, the best card in the deck, and the card that essentially makes this deck so insane, is uh, two Marinsis Wave, so this card is just an imperm, like, at face value, if you look at it, and people are like, oh, it's just an imperm, but the thing that it does really well, is that it makes uh, your link monsters, I think it's all your Marinsis monsters on the field, unaffected by card effects, and being unaffected by card effects is insane, because now you're opponent essentially can't out your big monsters outside of li literally just a kaiju right so this being making your cards like not affected by anything is crazy and that's why you're playing all these again this can be searched but i like playing too because if you draw it it makes it easier to search stuff like dive and whatnot right so that's it for the marinsis cards again very very small marinsis engine and that's where i think this deck becomes really good is because you can fit so much non-engine right so playing three ash and three imperm i think these are just some of the most generic hand traps so i think it makes a lot of sense to play three ash three imperm uh no reason to not play and then one card that i like playing in the main deck is three gamma seal so initially these were actually droll and lock birds but i decided to play gamma seal in the main because i noticed that uh the toughest matchup in this deck or against this deck is uh, purely and purely is just really tough for some reason because they keep just bouncing cards and stuff and like i i don't want all my cards to be bounced right even though this deck is a lot of extenders every time i summon body if something gets bounced it becomes really difficult so for that reason i do like playing the gamma seals just to get rid of those cards and then this is also just really good into a lot of generic monsters that like monster boys that your opponent sets up if you have the like barons and all that kind of stuff against manadium uh gamma seals just becomes really really powerful so this is kind of like your hand traps board breakers and then another card that i like playing is three thrust now thrust is also really important because like i said you could search stuff like your wave you could search stuff like your dive but then you can search more board breakers right so in this case we can search cards like ttt which are insane into pretty much every matchup this card being able to change a heart is really broken 
because you can use the monsters that you take from your opponent to link climb if you're going second. Um, on top of that, if your opponent activates a hand trap, you can draw cards, so this acts like a draw engine for you. And you guys are gonna see I'm not actually playing any draw cards, like part of desires and whatnot, because this is just all the consistent, like the deck's already pretty consistent, and then this is gonna provide you with more consistency, and it's gonna provide you uh, with a board breaker as well, like a presence in that sense. And then we're playing the one harpies. This was the 40th card I put in. It's a card that you can search off of thrust as well, and it's really good in just back row decks if you're going second, especially I think Labyrinth is gonna be really good. So just having uh, harpies is really important. And then I'm playing three uh, Book of Eclipse. Uh, Book of Eclipse is still really good in today's format, even though Arise Heart is gone now. I still think Book of Eclipse is really, is a, keep in mind, it doesn't affect you at all because all your monsters are link monsters essentially. So being able to just activate Book of Eclipse, like do your combo set Book of Eclipse, means that a lot of time your opponent can't play, right? In an Unchained matchup, if they put two monsters on the board, you go Book of Eclipse, they can't get into their Yama plays and whatnot. So it does make it difficult for a lot of decks to play around the Book of Eclipse. I also like playing one Monster Reborn. Now, this one is where I know a lot of people are gonna get like, well, what are you doing? Why are you playing Monster Reborn? I like playing Reborn, one, because it's searchable off Thrust, but two, it's kind of like Dive, but unlike Dive, it can just target a Link Monster. Dive can't actually target any Link Monsters in your graveyard, so it does help you Link Climb in that sense. You can also target any monster in your opponent's graveyard, technically. It's just, I think, a little bit more flexible than Dive, and while Dive is searchable with Marines' cards, Monster Reborn isn't, so of course, it's one of those non-searchable one ofs unless you activate Thrust, right? So technically, you get Thrust for it. You don't do it all the time, but I think it's just a better extender than a second dive. But technically, you could play two dive here instead. I just like the Monster Reborn. I think Monster Reborn is just a little bit better. One called by the grave, of course. I'm pretty sure this is just standard into a lot of things right now. And then lastly, three goes in match. This card makes this deck absolutely insane. If you're able to... Uh, just because you're always ending on a Towers, right? And if you're able to go in, it's so good into a lot of decks. The only deck this is not good into, actually, is... Um, is uh, Salaman Great, and that, that's pretty much it. Everything else in the format pretty much loses to Gozen, so uh, I like Gozen match. But that's it for the main deck. I believe it's 40 cards. It might be 41, but I, I think I think it's 40. I don't think I went over 40. But yeah, 40, 40 or 41, one of those. Still, really, really consistent deck. So then moving on to the extra deck here, I just wanna give a huge shout out to my sponsors, Main Phase. They provided me with these oversleeves over here. They're absolutely stunning, and the quality is really nice. And I really like that it fit with the uh, Marinsis vibes over here, the water vibes, right? So we're playing two Blue Slug. I think two Blue Slug as well as two Sea Angels, very important. These are your Link 1s for the deck, and we all know how busted Link 1s are. Again, you're just always gonna wanna Link Climb. This gives you a Zoin... Uh, zoin? Zoinks? <laughs> so bad. This gives you a zone that it points to, so you can special summon out some of your other Marinsis monsters. So that's why Seahorse and uh, Blue Slug are really, really important. This is another extender for you. We're playing the one Crystal Heart only because with Battle Ocean, um, when you use Crystal Heart as a material for a Link Summon, that monster becomes unaffected, so it's, it's really, really powerful in that sense. Then we're just playing a bunch of Marinsis and Link Climbing monsters, so two Anemone, one of the Marble Rock, one of the Coral Triangle, and then uh, one of your Great Bubble Reef. Uh, these are just really, really important big monsters for you to make. But the main boss monster of the deck that you're a lot of the time going to be ending on is uh, Aqua Argonaut. And again, this card becomes really, really beefy with the battles, Battle City, whatever that card is called. Battle, man, what are these Marine Sus cards called? Battle Ocean, Battle Ocean, not Battle City. This is not, this is not Yugi Kai, but yeah. Anyways, um, Battle Ocean is really good because again, makes it unaffected when you use Crystal Heart. It gives it a big boost. It becomes pretty much a tower. It's unaffected plus a big monster that you're just gonna be attacking with uh, over and over again. Then I like playing the One Zelantis. This card is really good. Uh, in certain situations, there's certain combos where it's really good. So I like playing the One Zelantis. Uh, we're playing the One Era. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of these times, like you might be walked into water monsters. So you, if you guys didn't notice, all of the extra decks of water. It's also really good into Gozen as well, right? So you can pretty much make everything here. Uh, we're playing the one Splash Mage just as an extender. And then lastly, I play playing the one Stealth Kragen. Uh, if you're able to extend a little bit further than normal, you can end on an Argonaut plus a Stealth Kragen because if you have Gozen, I only do that when you have Gozen because essentially Stealth Kragen makes it so that your opponent's monsters become water. So as soon as they commit to one monster on the board, even, a, okay, so... This is where it's good into Salamangrate Great as well, because even though, like I said, Gozen's not good into Salamangrate, Great, if you can set up Stealth Kragen, it makes their water mon- or their bo- <laughs> I don't know why I can't speak today. It makes their monster water when it hits the board, which means now they can't actually summon anything from their hand or whatnot, right? So even though Gozen's not good into certain decks, this card automatically makes Gozen good into those decks, right? So. 15 cards over here. For the side deck, I'm playing three Joel and Lockbird. Again, this is what I was maining initially, but I just feel like into some decks, it's not great. Of course, into Manadium and stuff, it's insane. But I just feel like into Unchained and stuff, which is really popular right now, even into like Tier Limit, I think, which is getting popular, this is not that great. So um, that's why I decided to put this in the side now. I'm playing two Cosmic Cyclone. We're playing the Harpies in the main deck already, but if we choose to see, or if we end up seeing more back row, we can side these in. 
one change of heart, a card that you can search off of TTT. And again, you want to link climb and being able to link climb means that if you're going second, take your opponent's monsters and then use their monsters. So effectively clears our board. And then a card that I wanted to side in that I thought was really spicy is three Gravekeeper's Inscription. There's three effects on the card. The thing is you're most of the time in this format specifically just going to be using the first effect. So the first effect here on the card pretty much says neither player can activate cards or effects in the graveyard. Now you can imagine into a format where people are trying to play tier limits, that's insane. Where people are playing Unchained, that's insane. So it's pretty much a dweller. The only downside to this card, I will say, is that it has to be activated at the beginning of your main phase, which means you can't thrust into it. Like, okay, technically you can thrust into it, but you can't actually activate it afterwards. So that's the only downside of the card, but I think the card is still still like really, really insane. Uh, if you guys don't want to play this, you guys can try uh, Bestial Monsters. Those could be pretty good as well against tier limits and whatnot and against the uh, unchained but i just thought this card was kind of insane and it doesn't uh it, it synergizes with your deck in the sense of it seals once you put them on the board sometimes you're locked out of uh anything except water so you can't summon the bestials then and then there's times where you have goes in match which means you can't summon the bestials so that's why i like these and then lastly when you're going first uh 3d barrier uh d barrier is of course really really powerful into mandium a lot of, a lot of different decks this card's insane branded and whatnot and then lastly three rivalry so rivalry is really good into the decks where gozen is not really good into because you can just play this instead and if you guys haven't noticed all of your monsters here are cybers uh, so and mostly extra deck, all, all the extra decks are cybers as well so rivalry is just one of those cards where it's kind of like hey if my opponent auto loses to rivalry then why not side this and just auto win so that's it for the deck profile guys but thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you that is my marine Says profile for the september 2023 format going into october and this whole format you guys know how it is so make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy this video we're almost at uh, 14,000 actually so let's see if we can get to 14,000. i want to get to 15,000 by the end of the year i know we can make it happen because i believe in the spanko squad thank you guys all for watching with that spanko signing out peace oh wait 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 alpha thank you Peace!